everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. With Mike's. This is that episode we were talking about. Yeah, this is the one where our voices will be bearable to listen to on mobile headphones and your laptop. Woo! All audio iPad. devices. Well, your poop. Anyways. Kindle Fire HD. Nook. Color. They have those? Yes. I didn't know. Okay. Okay, so today was kind of a landmark. We're going to be starting on Exodus. This is the first Bible episode after Genesis. We finished one chapter of the Bible. Got a whole bunch to go. Woo! Yep. So, uh, without further ado, let's just get this thing going. Yeah. Exodus, chapter 1. That's right. Verse 6. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting on verse 6 because earlier it's boring, but moving on. (laughs) Now Joseph and all of his brothers and all that generation died. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. Like rabbits. Yeah, like rabbits. But they have a clamps. Oh, I hate you. That's I can't okay. wait until this is done with being Jewish. Oh, wait. That'll never fucking happen. <laughs> when we get to Revelations, very not Jewy. Just monsters and death and seals and horsemen. Verse 8. Then a new king, to whom Joseph meant nothing, came to power in Egypt. He meant nothing to him. Within that king's lifetime, Joseph saved the entire land of Egypt with his rationing. I also find it interesting that right there we don't get an exact name of the pharaoh, even though Mm -hmm. we know a lot of the names of pharaohs. We don't get this one, especially if you're writing down the history of your people. You'd want to know which one was like, hey, let's fucking make them slaves. Verse 9. Look, he said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies. Fight against us and leave the country. Politicians, am I right? Right. Right? Uh-huh. No, but really, he is just saying, oh, they're going to be a fucking problem. We need to solve this. Yeah. Now, whereas <clears throat> maybe other places in the Bible, let's say the Hebrews had a problem with people, they would slaughter them. This Pharaoh's just saying, well, let's just, let's enslave them. Yeah. Yeah. Is that worse? I don't even know. Yeah. My moral line is so blurred at this point from all the Bible reading. Yeah, we're going to be terrible people by the end of this. Verse 11. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. So the more they were oppressed, the more horny they got and wanted to like reproduce? It's all the whips. I'm telling you. (laughs) Fifty Shades of Cray. Whoa. Am I right? You're right. Giggity giggity. Giggity goo. Stick around. Oh, this is a good episode. <laughs> you can't just say that for oh, to be true. I can tell. This is a ter- I can tell, though. All right. I'm feeling it. <laughs> Verse 13. They worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with harsh labor and brick and mortar, and with all the kinds of work in the fields and all of their harsh labors, the Egyptians worked them ruthlessly. That's generally how slavery works. Yeah. You don't I- usually, like, get massages unless you're like half white thomas jefferson slave yeah then you get to bang the president and um live in his house monticello the king of egypt said to the hebrew midwives whose names were shifra and pua (laughs) when you are helping the hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool if you see that the baby is a boy kill him but if it is a girl let her live the delivery stool they have the single delivery the delivery stool not on their delivery stool the (laughs) delivery stool there's a line you will fucking wait yeah it's much akin to the weeping room but it's a stool where you squat and shoot a baby out your vajayjay probably also poop that's just a medical fact. I don't know yeah, what you're you laughing. Probably avoid your bowels when you. Yeah. Yeah. Verse seventeen. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Why would the midwives from Egypt fear the Hebrew God? They, they wouldn't. They shouldn't. would. They would believe in the Egyptian pantheon. Yeah. They wouldn't even a little bit be. They'd make fun of them. The more I read this book, the more I think it was written from a very Hebrew-centric perspective. Really? Yeah. Shocking. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Really? Very Hebrew-centric. Wow. The Torah... Is really Hebrew. I'm yeah. shocked. Uh, I like the. They're so vigorous. Look how quick they can shoot babies out of themselves. <laughs> they're wider and they have strong muscles. They just auto kegel all day. They don't even know it. Oh, I'll wait for the laughter to stop. Auto kegel. Auto kegel. That's a good one. Oh yes. 
Verse 20. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Wow. The more I read about this, the more God sounds like an artificial cow in seminary. You know, the ones that stick their hands all the way up the cow vagina? Yeah, and they He's shove like, the semen in there. He's yeah. like, you can have a child. You, you it's can't. Like Oprah. You can have a child, and you can have... But instead of just saying it, it's Oprah sticking her hand all the way up inside you, but the hand is full of semen. <laughs> That's a bad... <laughs> Cow semen. <laughs> I think that one fell apart. It didn't fall apart. If anything, it came together at the end. It all tied it up in a nice little bow like a gift from Oprah. <laughs> oh, wow. Verse 22. Then Pharaoh gave the order to all his people... Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. A lot like China. Yeah. A lot like China. A lot like it. Except reverse. Yeah. Reverse China. So not China. How much... The, the person who wrote this... Um, for some reason, they say it's always Moses. That doesn't make sense. No, Moses... I don't... Who says Moses wrote this? I don't think... Are you fucking it. kidding me? Really? People think Moses wrote Genesis. No. Yeah. I mean... New Testament wise, you can obviously argue that the the I mean, disciples clearly, wrote, was... but I feel like Old Testament, except for things when you get into like Solomon and things, you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like you can't say they who say wrote. He wrote that Numbers and Leviticus. I don't know why you would say that. Uh, I mean, maybe you're an idiot. maybe you could maybe argue Leviticus a little bit, but you're just reaching for straws. There's no way you could ever provide evidence to I that. Just say it. Why would you say that? Kent Hoban told me. That he wrote it. While he was writing a Velociraptor, which is badass, so yeah. I shouldn't naysay it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways. Do you well, think Kent Hovind gets raped in prison? I don't know. Most uh, most prisoners are religious, so probably not. Yeah. It's probably held in high regard. Chapter 2. The Birth of Moses. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. When a man loves a woman. Which one are you, the man or the woman? Questioning the kid's sexuality. Well done. <laughs> and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket. Uh, superscript C here that also translates to ark. Yeah. Ark means box. So she makes a little box out of papyrus. Mmm, papyrus You're box. You're really into this papyrus. 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 Okay. She <laughs> She got a papyrus basket for him and coated <laughs> it with... You just wanted to say it one more time. Oh, now I gotta do it again. She got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. She placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. Ooh, the Nile. That's how you know it's in Egypt. Also, they say it's in Egypt. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. I like that imagery, just standing like... Hey, Where was that line added? It happens in The Prince of Egypt, the, the movie. movie. Everyone should go see The Prince of Egypt. That's actually a really good movie. Hugo made me watch it. It's not that bad. Snape plays the pharaoh. And, and Patrick Stewart plays the pharaoh, which is the origin of why Patrick Stewart is always the pharaoh whenever we show him. Yeah. Because well, he's such a good pharaoh. But behind the scenes. Jeff Goldblum is in the movie. He plays Aaron, I believe. Yeah. Um, The guy, Val Kilmer, plays uh, Moses, my only bad casting Val Kilmer. What a shitty Batman. Yeah. He shouldn't... I'm Batman. No, okay. you're not Val Kilmer. Stop okay. it. George Clooney was worse, though, but he had nipples. But that's... Here's my problem with George Clooney as Batman. I just think, George Clooney, why are you bat... What are you doing in a Batman <laughs> movie? I don't even think... It's like he went to Bruce Wayne's house, and Bruce Wayne's like, I gotta go do something for a week. I have a business meeting. And George Clooney's like, okay, I'll hang out. But then he found the Batcave, and he's like, oh, shit. George Clooney's about to be Batman here for the next week. So that movie is that week when he decided to be Batman when Bruce Wayne was out of town. That's a better way to watch that fucking movie. That actually makes it a great movie. You're welcome, everyone. Seven million. Never leave the cave without it. Continuing with the Bible. <laughs> Verse 5. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe. Her attendants were walking down the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. <laughs> She's really good at identifying Hebrew babies. <laughs> the only answer I can come up with is maybe it was circumcised already. Maybe it was a racial thing. Is it a racial thing? Would you tell the difference between a... I don't know. I but tell I... the difference between like a Nigerian baby and one from Wisconsin, but probably not. 
That's her superpower. This is a Hebrew baby. <laughs> it's like it smells of vodkas. <laughs> I was right. This is a good episode. <laughs> Smells of latkes and matzo balls. Mm, unleavened. <laughs> There's no yeast a- on that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good goddamn episode. Okay. Verse 7. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went to get the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. Wait, one fucking second. She's paying the mother of Moses to be the wet nurse of Moses, and she's getting paid for it? Here's the I I don't think it's made clear here, but I think the idea is that they don't know it's his mother, but somehow God has made it so they pay her for that. It clearly, it says, So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Yep. That sounds pretty intentional. Two things. Either it could A, be a mistranslation, which is very possible, happens. Two, it could be them saying that God's got her to happenstance go to that particular woman who was the baby's mother in the first place so she could nurse Bible him. I'm school talking right now. I hate that person that thinks that. Hy- you're hating a hypothetical person? Absolutely. I can hate hypothetical rapists. Why can't I hate hypothetical person that thinks this? I mean, I get... <laughs> it's a gray area, but I guess there's a line somewhere, and I guess as long as you know it falls somewhere squarely on one side of the line, you can do whatever you want. All right. Thank you. (laughs) So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him from out of the water. Also, just so you know, Moses in Hebrew, uh, it sounds like the Hebrew word for draw out. So that's where the word, the name Moses comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Also, he went that long without getting a name. Well, I mean, maybe that was, I don't know for a fact, but maybe that was a traditional thing. I know some cultures don't name babies until they get older, especially back then, because chances are babies wouldn't survive in the first mm-hmm. place. They'll get attached. They, it's kind of, yeah. It's kind of Infant mortality rate's really high. Makes so. sense. Yep. Actually. Weird. Next section. Moses flees to Midian. <gasps> <gasps> Fucking Midian. Verse 11. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor course he's watching the hebrew slaves but he doesn't know he's uh, a hebrew yet he saw an egyptian beating a hebrew one of his own people looking this way and that seeing no one he killed the egyptian and hid him in the sand right because that's okay to do when's that a rule it's not like it's etched in stone or anything Uh, yeah dumb joke be ashamed the next day he went out and saw two hebrews fighting he asked the one in the wrong why are you hitting your fellow hebrew why didn't he just fucking murder that one the man said who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you did the Egyptian? Oh, then snap. That's a mouthy slave, though, to be yeah. honest. What's your name? Toby with an I, with an accent over the I, and a little line over the O, so you know it's a long vowel sound and not a short one. And sometimes I like to dot the I with a little smiley face or a heart or something. Something to brighten the reader's day. I asked you what your name was. Honey, you keep that up. It's whatever you want it to be. Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I did must have become known. No it, shit, guy. You killed a guy out in the open with slaves all around. Are you shocked? You're famous. You're one of the you're related to the Pharaoh. You're not not known. Right. It's like Tom Cruise going and murdering people. Tom Cruise is too nice. He's the nicest celebrity. Tom Cruise is a Scientologist. They enslave children. He's oh, I was nice. thinking about Tom Hanks, not Tom Cruise. Oh, Tom Hanks is a wonderful Tom Cruise man. is a piece of shit. Right. Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. I would hang out with Tom Hanks. I would, I would, I would spend a whole day with Tom Hanks and just sit. I will one up you. I'll spend all day and all night with him. Not sexual. We'll just have a slumber party. Can I have sex? With we'll Tom watch. Hanks? No, he's too nice. He doesn't have genitalia or a butthole. That's how nice he is. I know he has a mouth. <laughs> he can't. It's there's it's, a wall in the back. It's like a mouth hymen. Oh God! We need to keep going. We need to press on. <laughs> we need to press on so much. Okay. Verse 15, when Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. In the movie The Prince of Egypt, he leaves of his own free will. His, he's, it's even implied that he would have gotten away with it because he's really considered one of Pharaoh's sons. This is, of course, the movie, not the biblical canon. But uh, he leaves because he feels so bad about it and he feels shamed. 
You should really go see that movie, it is a solid movie. Verse 16, Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water, and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. Some shepherds came along and drove them away, but Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. Yeah, that seems to be a big problem. You know, those people who drive people away from watering their flocks. It's a thing. It's their livelihood. Who does that? It's more of a plot device than anything. Whatever. Don't worry about Fuck it. Fuck that. When the girls returned to Raul, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Raul asked his daughters. Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man. He gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Whoa, like immediately? Yeah, just fuck it. I, I remember specifically in the movie she wasn't very enthused about uh, the whole Moses situation. Well, I mean, we in, the mo- in the movie a romance happens. They at least have a romance with time lapses and a, and a song over it, like a montage. Here, it's more accurate to the point where, like, yeah, this, she's a prop- this is a property transaction. Thanks for watering my sheep. Here's a vagina. <laughs> Zipporah gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom. Oh, saying, what a bad name. Gershom. Gershom. My name is Gershom Silverstein. How are you? <laughs> what is Moses' last name? They don't have last names. Silverstein? Silverstein. We'll call him Moses Silverstein from now on. All right. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. I like to think he'd been up there for the past... Century. I don't know how long it was, just watching America's Next Top Model marathon, and all of a sudden, they finally got loud enough in unison, and was like, what the fuck is that? And he looks, he's like, oh shit. They got enslaved? I left for like five minutes. <laughs> That's my bad. That's completely my bad. I got caught up, and I had a whole pint of haagen I don't know. It was the strawberry one, though. It's, it's... Oh, where's that Moses guy? I'm on this. Don't worry. It's It'll be cool. Yeah. It'll be cool. God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. <laughs> not like, oh, he's just kind of concerned. He's like, huh, that's probably not good. It's so like a number I can text to donate like $5 or... No, I have to actually go do something? Fuck. Uh, not a big Fuck. action guy. Where's the keys to the bush? Donna, where are the keys to the bush? Who's Donna? He's, it's his girlfriend. <laughs> They're not on the hook. That's what you think. That's the first place I would have looked. I left them on the hook. I Dumb left them. Fucking... They're in the fridge. Donna, don't fuck with me. Why would I put them in the fridge? Right when I got the haagen Damn it. Damn. I am just off my game today. <laughs> okay, now we're on to chapter three after God finds the keys to the bush. Now Moses Silverstein was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Interestingly, back up. It yeah. says his father-in-law is Jethro, the priest of Midian, but on the page before when it says he was married to Zipporah, Zipporah it says that his, her father's name is... Ruel. Ruel. Possibly a second wife. I mean, it doesn't say he took a second wife um, from there, but it's possible he may have taken a second right. wife from the people's but if Midian. It, uh, what this implies is that there's another author to Exodus, uh, and we're only on the second page. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I. It's just, it catches my attention mostly because usually when he, anybody gets married, they usually say it. Right. Or, you know what I mean? But they didn't mention it at all. So I, I don't know what's up with that. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Mr. Silverstein here, but... yeah. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Hey, Donna! It's because I told you, I told you it would get him. He totally came over to this burning bush thing. It doesn't, it's on fire, but it doesn't burn. He doesn't understand doesn't chemistry. Understand. I can do this, I'm God. You got any more haagen We can share it and watch this crazy cat. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses! Moses! And Moses said, Here here I am. <laughs> Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are is standing as holy ground. I'm fucking with him. <laughs> He's wearing socks with the sandals too. He's that guy. Oh, shit. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, 
I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Hittites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Wait, so, so God, you're gonna, you're just gonna stop all the oppression right now? And, well... And use, and use your omnipotence? I... And, 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 like, just end our suffering right now and you'll just, you'll take care of it? I kind of have a lot on my plate this week. Oh. I don't, I oh, mean, don't get me wrong. Does next week work? You know... I don't do the whole planning thing. I don't have a set calendar. Right. So I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen. I but can I, respect that. I have, um, I have to go work on inventing AIDS. But if you could handle this, I'll what? give you a magic stick. What am and I... you can, you can go get this, right? I heard flocks. It's like all I do. Yeah, but they're like flocks, but they're people. You just got to get them out of Egypt. It's like herding goats one place they, to another what if they don't listen to me like three or four times and i have to kill some of them i'll kill more of them what if um what if we run out of food i'll sky food sky food mana sky food so i'll call it mana just made it up i'm god i do that is this, is this the only option is there no other way <sighs> i mean you could wander around the desert for like 40 years, but that's kind of like a plan B. Can you just go do this? Do me a solid and... I'll do my best? Okay. Donna, he says he'll do it! <laughs> I know. <laughs> Alright, I gotta go. Alright, I'll thanks. Call me later. Verse 11. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I like that under I am who I am, the superscript is alternate translation. Will I will be what I will be. <laughs> whenever you write a book about me and make me up. God also said to Moses, Say this to, to the Israelites. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel, and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of the misery in Egypt, into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Hivites, Jezubites, a land flowing with milk and honey, and ites. <laughs> Verse 18. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. Holy shit. Not just, I'm going to take you out of there. We're going to get all their shit Ocean's 13 style. Woo. Not even Ocean's 11. Did you hear me? Ocean's 13. It's another George Clooney reference. Yeah, lots of Clooney today. Too much Clooney. You can never have too much. Have you seen him? Yes. He's a good looking guy no matter the age. So, that's all, all right. we're going to cover for now. Yeah. Got through three chapters of Exodus. That's pretty decent. Mm hmm. And two pages. So, neato. Woo woo. So, yeah. next time we'll be covering more of that or something else. I have no idea. Right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, no real things going on except for you guys should be buying t shirts and yes. stuff. T shirts, hats, stickers. Buy the sticker, stick them on stuff. Put it on our Facebook page. Right. Uh, this episode was too good. We put too much good things in this episode. Now we have nothing to say. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this has been The Bible Reloaded. And it smells like tacos in my house.